Hi and assalamualaikum to Sir Wan Mamafi Spewasno. Well, today me and my groupmates are going to present about the comparison regarding on the use of technologies in two library websites. Um, it is prepared by Mama Raisat Ben Abdul Rahman, me Nur Amshir Bagus Mutamran, Nur Najihan Amshir Binti Johari, and lastly Nur Nabila Binti Muhammad Khairi. So the first slide is about the introduction of the National Library of Scotland. The National Library of Scotland is a legal deposit library and also a component of the Scottish People's Important National Collection. The NLS is a member of the Research Libraries UK and the consortium of the European Research Library, which is a well-known fact. Around 24 million items in a range of media are housed in the National Library of Scotland, including books, new papers, postcards, annotated manuscripts, and rough drawings. Scotland's Moving Image Archive is a section of the library, home to some uh, 46,000 films and videos. The collection includes the Gutenberg Bible, Shakespeare's first folio, the Glyn Riddle manuscripts, and Charles Darwin's later submitting his manuscript for on the origin of species. The world's greatest collection of Scottish Gaelic resources is housed in this institution. So the next slide is about a logo, vision, mission, and objective of the library. If you can see. That is the logo of National Library of Scotland. And for the vision of Lo National Library of Scotland is to create opportunities for people to participate in Scotland's rich cultural life as one of the leading national libraries in Europe, while their mission is to enhance Scotland's international reputation by making a significant contribution to global knowledge and the memory of the world. There are some objectives uh, of National Library of Scotland. The first one, the guardian of the published and recorded memory of Scotland for current uh, and future generations. Second, make it easier for people to access the collection. Next, they put audience at the heart of everything they do and offer a rich variety of ways for people to participate and engage with heritage. Other than that, uh, their objective is to encourage and support research, learning and discovery and they will continue to be a great organization to work for and with developing new, new ways of doing, delivering and partnering. So right now, I'm going to explain about the services at National Library of Scotland. So basically, it has six services. But now I'm going to start with the first one, which is IT services. So basically, IT services um, give users and students access to word processing and spreadsheet tools in order to manage the library's electronic resources, catalogs, and image collection. So um, additionally, customers can easily access to the internet and email thanks to it being available at the library. The National Library of Scotland's PC are kept in an IT center with a living area where patrons and students can use their computers. For instance, all of the library's electronic resources, the internet and Microsoft Office are accessible through these PCs, keeping the user's work safe. Give the user access to floppy drives and USB ports so they can save their work. In addition, the libraries, um, the National Library of Scotland provided printing services. Customers can um, use printing services and pay 10 cents for each sheet of black and white paper. So next, um, which is booking services. The National Library of Scotland has launched a booking facility for its Edinburgh reading rooms in preparation of its restricted reopening of 27th April. They must have a hard copy of electronic copy of the email that serves as their reservation confirmation when they arrive for their visit. Additionally, we have started pre-ordering internet platforms for gathering resources. Others must be made at least 24 hours before the reading room session is scheduled. Next, membership services. 
members of the public and staff who are interested may now join the National Library of Scotland. Additionally, access to National Library of Scotland membership services is restricted to those who fall within the stated group, which included um, in public university uh, faculty, government employees, corporate ambassadors, alumni, and also students. So moving on to the reading room. Both of the Edinburgh locations of the National Library of Scotland on George Ivy Bridge and Causeway site offer a reading room, albeit only during specific hours. On top of that, more information will be posted on the National Library of Scotland website. The current security measures, the library's operating hours, the reservation procedures for access to its reading room, and also basic visitor guidelines are all covered in this information. Next is books regulations. So additionally, the books regulations will be put into effect by the National Library of Scotland. It is acceptable to use the book regulations in circumstances where the library users or students are paused. Alright, right now we will go to the activities held in National Library of Scotland. Then we have, first we have Fresh Ink. The National Library of Scotland will begin accepting application for Fresh Ink on December 1st, 2020. Provide up to 10 inspiring authors with thousands depend for innovative solution to the prom my experience of 2020. <laughs> Commission will be offered to individuals who can demonstrate their appropriateness and dedication to writing by submitting password. After that, we have activity Scott Scriber Residency. The Scott, the Scott Scriber Residency application process is now open and will accept submission through May 5th, 2021. The National Library of Scotland is glad to announce it. This year, the Orkney Library and the National Library of Scotland will work together to give one Orkadian resident the opportunity to produce creative work in the language. Next, we have the Elizabeth Southern Biden Competition 2022. The National Library of Scotland state on 6 May 2021 that the 2022 Elizabeth Souter Book Binding Competition is already accepted submission. And the last one, we have Summer Solstice Activities. On the 21st of June 2021, the National Library of Scotland will be commem commemorating the longest day of the year by displaying in their map collection, the Magnificent Graphic of the season that is taken from A.K. Johnston, 1869, School Atlas of Astronomy. <laughs> Next, we have Department of Organization Structure. This is uh, organizational structure of the National Library of Scotland. That we have National Library and Chief Ex Executive, Director of Business Support, Interim Associate Director of Collection and Research, Associate Director of Access, Associate Director of Collection Management, Interim Associate Director of Digital, and the last one we have Associate Director of External Relations. Relations. Moving on to the technologies in the National Library of Scotland. Okay, firstly, you can create a user account. So users who register with the National Library of Scotland are given unlimited access to a huge selection of e-resources at no extra charge. You may access this data from a, any computer in the nation, say from the one at the National Library. If you have your primary residence in Scotland and users can access the restricted number of items that are publicly available to them without having to register as well, uh, which is user can access tons of resources. User can access the following resources, including thousands of digitized books, journals and manuscripts from the 5th century, thousands of records and summarized accessible through online services and databases in addition to those thousands of newspaper, journals and reports fully accessible, and thousands of other resources. There are hundreds of full text references as well, everything including government, uh, politics, business, literature, the arts, history, biographies, Americana, uh, music, and everything in between. And users also can look through and search the wide selection of licensed digital assets to find the location. So next, the limitation for the National Library of Scotland, because I'm pretty sure every library has their own weakness or their own limitation. So as for this uh, library, which is the National Library of Scotland, they has uh, restrictions on its library's use of public facilities. They are stacked high with volumes. 
the National Library of Scotland should be among the libraries in the 21st century with electronic access to online databases. For instance, nothing needs to be reorganized because these resources stay in the same location, making it simple for customers to browse the data. In addition, since the resources of the National Library of Scotland are accessed via computers, it is simple to refer to clients who are looking for works by a certain author that are focused on a particular subject. Okay, next, um, the staff assistance, whether provided online or not, is another restriction at the National Library of Scotland. In the smallest of libraries, a head curator will be displayed, while larger libraries will be showcased teams of volunteers or paid personnel who can help patrons with book requests or prescriptions. An online chat with a librarian, for instance, can help patrons of libraries understand concepts and analyze information such as how the data is structured within the library. So, um, as for the recommendation for the National Library of Scotland, the National Library of Scotland should provide direct access to both their traditional and cutting edge collections as well as open and inclusive services is the advice that has been previously given to the library. The National Library of Scotland is committed to making the information contained in its holding as widely accessible as possible. For instance, they help to lessen inequities by removing barriers that prevent clients and customers from participating in instructions and learning. As the ebook, book, e-journal, social media and information are recast, the library will also need to expand its information communication. The um, National Library of Scotland libraries will be more transparent in how they provide and permit data, as well as, um, as well as revealing their daily operations on social media. In addition, National Library of Scotland will work to eliminate any barriers that prevent people from assessing its collections and services, which will advance equality and opportunity. And last but not least, National Library of Scotland will ally with their customers and audience as partners, collaborators, and supporters, seeking opportunities for them to reuse our content and participate via social media and crowdsourcing. So next, we are moving on to the National Library of Malaysia. The National Library of Malaysia, NLM, is a library established under the National Library Act 1872 in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The National Library is responsible for providing a collection of knowledge at national level for the present and future generation. In its effort to strengthen the library's collection, the National Library continues to play an active role in its acquisition of library materials through enforcement of the deposit of library material at 1986 acquisition give and exchange. So the next slide is about the logo, mission, mission and objective of the National Library of Malaysia. So the vision of the National Library of Malaysia is a world class leader in library development, services and leadership by the year 2020. While their mission is to enhance the delivery of quality information resources through library services in order to build a knowledge society. And there are some objectives of the National Library of Malaysia. The first one is to make available for the use of present and future generation a national collection of library resources. Next is to facilitate national, nationwide access to library resources available within the country and abroad and lastly is to provide leadership on methods pertaining to libraries so basically for the national library of malaysia there are two types of services which is the public and online so i'm going to start with the public services starting with the references services basically this is um, the services provided by the reference department in a library that helps the library patron to get access to the information that they need so, reference services provide rather advisory services, information packaging services, microfilm, newspaper services, which is newspaper microfilm and microfilm newspaper box, Malaysian service, research reference service, serial publication service, Malay manuscript reference service, and also business information.
Next, lending service. The lending division offers registered members lending services. Six books, six books may be checked out by members for three weeks. A single extension of the renewal period for three additional weeks is permitted. Failure to return overdue books will also result in a daily fine of 10 cents per book for the borrower. So services for lending include adult, child and group bulk loans. So basically it has lending service for adults, lending service for children, but loan. And as for the electronic resources services, there are hypermedia center services, computer internet and Wi-Fi, screening room, multimedia players and device, audio visual and electronic resources reference, digital library services, video on demand, um, cyber zone service, computer and internet, tablets and iPads, Samsung Smart Library, Children Corner, Interactive Zone, Reading Zone and also Working Zone. Next, SMS services. So the SMS facility can be used as a medium for the communications of reference queries in libraries. It is a form of virtual reference service. The text messaging technology can be used for referral services to guide the users to the source of information. Next, we have Jawi Clinic Notes. So basically, Perpustakaan Negara Malaysia in collaboration with Dewan Bahasa and Pustaka, DBP and Institute Kefahaman Islam Malaysia, IKIM, has published the Jawi Clinic program on radio IKIM since 2nd of June on 2012, every Saturday at 9.30am. Uh, and this publication invigorates Jawi writing and reading in Malaysians through Jawi learning slots on the radio. To date, the Jawi Clinic show has published a total of 196 episodes. For the online services, um, there are two things, which is OPEC and New Pustaka. I'm going to start with OPEC first. OPEC is a web-based online catalog that can be used to look for books or other items in a library collection, even if all you know is only one of the equipment lists for the books. And next is New Pustaka. The ubiquitous library portal was also developed by the National Library of Malaysia, New Pustaka, and it is online. Book borrowing and membership registration are both free on the U Pustaka website. Moving on to the publisher, which is it has three things, which is um, issuing international standard book number ISBN, um, issuing international standard serial number ISSN, and providing cataloging in publication, which is CIP. Um, next is interlibraries. There are two things, which is conservation service and also consultation services. So basically. Um, Conservation Services Division um, of the National Library of Malaysia has four main functions as you can see there which is to monitor the process of conserving and maintaining the holdings of National Library of Malaysia to enhance knowledge and awareness in conserving, storing and maintaining um, the library materials to assure the library materials which are the nation's intellectual heritage are well preserved and restored through preservation, restoration and binding for present and future reference and lastly to handle the process of reformatting the, libra the library materials from their original form into other form. And next is consultation services. It provides several aspects in the following services which is um, overall planning for the setting up of a new library, which is preparation of project proposals, um, layout plan or design and specification of library equipment, um, next, technical and documentation, uh, thirdly, library services, and lastly, integrated library system. For activities that are held in National of Library of Malaysia, first, we have Media and Information Literacy Program. In 2011, the National Library of Malaysia produced three levels of media and information liter literacy module, which are basic, intermediate, and advanced program. Next, we have Jalu Gemilang Decoration Competition Level, Wilayah Persekutuan Kuala Lumpur, a certificate of appre appreciation and a consolation prize in the amount of 500 ringgit were presented to the National Library of Malaysia by the Mayor of Kuala Lumpur for their entry in the Government Building Independence Day Flag Decoration, including school category. Next, we have activity Jawi Script Culturalization Program. The National Library of Malaysia, by way of the Glory of Jawi Initiative, contributes significantly to the effort of the society to improve Jawi Script Culturalization programs. And next, we have Origami Craft Paper Wallet and Origami Craft Tiger Folding. 
This craft is organized to enhance and building children's creativity in making paper wallet by origami craft and tiger folding origami in various shapes. As for the departments, I'm going to start with the management staffing. Basically, uh, Salah Syah Binti Abdul Wahad is the one who oversees all departments and agencies as Director General, obviously running the organization. The National Library of Malaysia is run by a large workforce who work together. They are divided up into several groups and tasks are given to them but based on their skill levels. And three primary divisions, each with its own division, make up the National Library of Malaysia. Management makes up the first unit, which is the management unit has personnel in charge of the integrity unit, management and human resource development, corporate service and information technology. Next, moving on to the library development. So building a library is the main goal of the second unit. People in charge of creating the information and knowledge infrastructure and the creation of library contents work in the library development unit. Each of these employees is given a division and a set of responsibilities. And lastly is library services staffing. The library service is the third component to be discussed. The personnel of the library service unit oversee the National Digital Library, community and subsidiary libraries, and the creation of information and references. Additionally, each of these employees has subordinate divisions and responsibilities. All right, this uh, organization structure in the National Library of Malaysia that we have so many departments in the organiza uh, organization structure. Next, technologies in the National Library of Malaysia. The National Library of Malaysia employs a variety of technologies and they begin by using Melmark, which is Malaysian Machine Readable Cataloging. The National Library of Malaysia's membership in the Melmark system marks the start of computerization. The National Library purchased a Radio Shack DRS80 microcomputer in 1982, which was primarily utilized to create the Malaysian Newspaper Index. The National Library acquired an Apple I microcomputer in 1984, which was mostly used to create reports, minutes of meetings, administer the National Library's mailing list, uh, and create employee rosters for the rudimentary staff. In 1987, the National Library purchased a laser jet to pass printer and IBM 80 to IBM XT and three IBM microcomputers, while the other two are used to categorize information on these cards that will be included in Melmark databases. One of the microcomputers is utilized to access external databases. Next, Access to external databases. Um, commercial databases have made it possible to libraries to access more resources that they could possibly store. If a microcomputer has the required connection and communication capabilities, it can connect to databases. 1984 saw the inaugural creation of Maypack by Sharikat Telecom Malaysia, uh, which is Malaysian Packaging Switching Services. This makes it possible for libraries and computers or terminals to pay a charge to connect to outside databases. Since search algorithms can be developed offline before being entered into pertinent external databases, using microcomputers could reduce communication expenses. One of the available reference services for quick information retrieval on a variety of subject areas is the National Library Computerized Information Services. Through a computer, external databases are reachable. Next, a reference search retrieval system. Responses to reference inquiries are handed, handled by the National Library's References Division. This can be carried out over the phone in writing by telefax through Teleter, which is a Malaysian video text, or even in person. The staff of the National Library will need to conduct extensive research on some of the submitted questions. Similar questions come out rather frequently during the manual procedures these questions were written down for later use on 5 times 8 inch cards that were arranged al alphabetically by subject. A reference inquiries retrieval system employing the micro CDS ISIS is being developed to increase system accessibility by storing records of such inquiries. This will make information more accessible and effective by streamlining its organization. 
it will also represent what consumers actually need in terms of information. In order to meet these needs in the near future, the National Library will be able to determine the numerous information resources that will be required. And last but not least is the detection system. The personnel will be able to concentrate or expanding the collection if the routine process of maintaining other ex uh, entry records is handled by an automated system. A collection system that is based on microcomputers is called the BTLS acquisition and fund accounting system, which is also known as simply the BTLS acquisition and fund accounting system. The National Library of Malaysia is the country's biggest library for studies. As a result, this library has some drawbacks, such as the lack of pictures or other visual representations of its amenities and services. For example, it includes auditoriums, cafeterias, camera rooms, and several others. The National Library of Malaysia has advertising services and facilities on its website. But each advertisement needs media or photographs to give users a sense of the actual amenities before National Library of Malaysia. Next. The language used on the National Library of Malaysia's website comes in second. Both Malay and English are available on the website. Malaysia is a home to a diverse population of ethnicities and languages, including Malay, Chinese, and Indian. Additionally, visitors and citizens from countries like Arabia and India who speak Arabic and Urdu frequently travel to Malaysia. Language obstacles will keep visitors from viewing the National Library of Malaysia website because it does not offer options in other languages. Apart from that, it has substances abuse problems. One of the most important driving factors is having high quality content. The website content is outdated and does not reflect the most recent information. Users trying to access the National Library of Malaysia's most recent information have encountered difficulties because of this. To ensure that the information provided on websites is accurate and up to date, the person in charge of managing them should be sensitive to recent technological development. As for the recommendation for the restriction in the website, is that the website data should be expanded uh, upon and updated to reflect the most recent information. It needs to be stressed to make it easier for all clients to find the information they need. So in conclusion, the information presented thus far demonstrates the critical role that libraries play in society as points of access to knowledge and culture through the tools and services they provide. It provides instruction, engagement, education and instruction and aids in the creation of new ideas and perspectives that are essential to an imaginative and creative culture. They tend to prefer using it over other search engines like Google, Safari and others in order to persuade potential customers to visit the library. The head of the library has the ability to transform the outdated and traditional library into a cutting edge one uh, that can be seen as a place full of information and innovation such as an ICT room, televisions and plan that demonstrates that it is the library of the longer term. That's all from us.